The 2011 NBA playoffs will always be known for the year Dirk Nowitzki, Mark Cuban, and the Dallas Mavericks won their NBA title, and the year that LeBron, Wade, and Bosch lost in their first year on the Miami Heat, maybe not always in that order. But on the way to Dirk's monumental title win, the Mavericks played one of the most consequential second-round NBA playoff series of all time against Kobe Bryant, Phil Jackson, and the two-time defending champion Los Angeles Lakers. The Mavericks would sweep Kobe's Lakers and even run them off the floor halfway through the second quarter of Game 4. How did it look so easy for the Mavs at times and what made this series so pivotal to the Mavs, the Lakers, and to NBA history? Welcome to Squad Dawkins, we're here to break it down. How could a 4-0 sweep in the second round of the NBA playoffs be one of the most pivotal playoff series ever? We didn't know it at the time, but looking back now, we know what was at stake in this series. For the Lakers, this series ended their chance at another three-peat in the Kobe era. It was Phil Jackson's last season coaching, and it was the end of his attempt to win a 12th ring and a 4th three-peat as a coach. This playoff run was also a chance for Kobe to get his sixth ring and tie Michael Jordan. This season was also probably Kobe's last best chance for a title because Phil Jackson stepped down and Mike Brown took over as head coach. They traded away Lamar Odom to the Dallas Mavericks. Pau Gasol wasn't an all-star the next year, and it was Andrew Bynum's turn to be Kobe's best teammate. That 2012 Lakers team still won a lot of games, but they were worse on offense and defense and ended up also losing in the second round to Kevin Durant, Russell Westbrook, James Harden, and the Oklahoma City Thunder. This 2011 second round matchup also may have been our best chance to see a Kobe versus LeBron NBA Finals. For the Mavericks, we learned that this sweep of the Lakers kick-started the Mavs' run at their first NBA title and gave Dirk Nowitzki his redemption for losing to the Heat in the 2006 Finals and losing to the Warriors in the first round of the playoffs in 2007. This playoff run was also Dirk's last real chance for an NBA title. Dirk and the Mavs never got out of the first round again after this season. For the NBA, this series was the start of the end of the double big man era. Pau and Bynum were two forces in the paint, but teams like the 2012 Miami Heat started to play LeBron James at the four spot and spread the floor. The Warriors would take this to another level with their death lineup, and now nearly every effective team in the league has a power forward who can shoot and attack the basket in some way. This 2011 Mavs-Lakers series was won in part because of the Mavs' three-point shooting. The Mavs made 49 threes over the course of the four-game series, and the Lakers only made 15. The league average for three-point attempts in a game was just 18 threes per game in 2010-11, and it rose every year until the 2021-22 season, and teams are now on average taking 35 threes per game. Teams looked at this series with the Mavs and saw, if a team can hit enough threes, you can beat anybody. That's what was at stake. Titles, legacies, and even the nature of the league shifted when the Mavs beat the Lakers in four games. Coming into this series, the Lakers had won the last two NBA championships behind Kobe Bryant, Pau Gasol, and the experience of Phil Jackson. They brought back nearly the same team who won those titles but added Steve Blake and Matt Barnes to their bench. Barnes added another wild card to the Lakers and was even suspended for one game during the season for getting into an altercation with Jason Terry after Jet pushed Blake to the ground on a hard foul. For Kobe Bryant, his hero arc was on its way down, but still in his prime, he would be named to two more first-team All-NBAs after this season. In Game 4 of the Lakers' first-round series against the New Orleans Hornets, Kobe sprained his ankle. He didn't miss any games, but sat out of practice between the two series. For Phil Jackson, he had almost decided to stop coaching the year before this series, but returned and proclaimed this would be his final season. The Lakers' second best player was still Pau Gasol, who was his fourth playoff run with the Lakers and they had made the finals each of the three years prior. But Pau struggled in the Lakers' first round series against Charlotte, averaging just 13.5 points, 6.8 rebounds, and shooting under 42% from the field. He still had something to prove to Kobe and Phil Jackson. Their starting center was Andrew Bynum, who was just 23 years old, but already in his sixth season with the Lakers. He missed the first 24 games of the season, but was healthy going into the playoffs. The Lakers' other starting forward was Ron Artest, who was not quite ready for world peace yet, was in his second year with the Lakers and hadn't made first-team all-defense in five years. Their sixth man was Lamar Odom, who won sixth man of the year this season in his seventh year on the Lakers and third year coming off the bench. The Lakers' starting point guard was still 36-year-old Derek Fisher, who was in his 15th season in the NBA and his last full year on the Lakers. On the Dallas side of this matchup, 
Dirk Nowitzki had suffered two devastating losses in the playoffs, the 2006 Finals and the 2007 First Round, when his 67-win Mavs lost to the Warriors, and Dirk had to accept his MVP trophy for that season while his team was already eliminated. He's called it the lowest point of his career, and at this point, his chance at the title was slipping away. The only other player on that 2006 Finals team was Jason Jett Terry, who won the sixth man of the year in 2009. He and J.J. Barea, who was on that 2007 team, helped form a phenomenal bench that led the NBA in bench scoring. The Mavs also added Peja Stojakovic during the season after a buyout from the Toronto Raptors. Jason Kidd was acquired by the Mavs in a trade in 2008. He was 37 years old during the series, but had made the All-Star team the season before. Sean Marion was also acquired via a trade in the 2009 offseason and was just two years removed from an all-star season in Phoenix. Tyson Chandler was the Mavs' big acquisition in a trade in the 2010 offseason and made the all-defensive team that season. In Game 1, Kobe Bryant set the tone for the Lakers. He hadn't been able to practice because of an ankle injury, but he scored their first seven points to get the Lakers out to a quick lead. Bryant with another open shot. Bryant inside. The Lakers were a huge team that dominated the boards and were fifth in the NBA in offensive rebounds that season. But the Mavericks had shooters, and that became their great equalizer as Peja Stojakovic, Jason Kidd, and Jason Terry all made threes along with another jet jumper to give Dallas a big 11-1 run. Kidd with the steal. Marion has Terry on the wing, and Terry hits the jumper. And the Mavs took a 25-23 lead into the second quarter. The Lakers' bigs teamed up to take the lead back from the Mavs. Their passing and screening in the paint caused problems for Dirk and the Mavs. Nice touch pass to Saul to bite him. That was fantastic. But Jason Terry kept the game close. And he thought he was hit. Terry with Bryant back. Shot clock, out of five. Terry eluding Fisher. The acquisition of Tyson Chandler was huge for the Mavs. He hated that the Mavs were referred to as soft and wanted to help his new squad change that narrative, which led to he and Pau Gasol getting double technicals at the end of the second quarter. Well, the league has been really vigilant about this uh, all season. If there's any kind of chattering between two players, it's pretty much an automatic double technical. Dirk made a layup to cut the Lakers' lead to five with just seconds left before halftime. But then disaster struck the Mavs. Here is Odom. Oh, oh, a foul is called on Jason Terry, and it's in the end. So Odom, oh, a technical foul. Now they're saying Dirk Nowitzki. Well, how about this close to the quarter for the Mavericks? Four points in three seconds. The Lakers carried momentum into the second half and overall went on a 21-2 run to take a 16-point lead. Bryant for three, yes! Timeout taken by Rick Carlisle. But after just five minutes of play and some costly turnovers, the Mavs cut it to three, which seemed to ignite Kobe Bryant. Points nine of the 24 here in the third. Fires for three. Well, Kobe has that look. He does, and he loves moments like these. When the other team makes a run, it's almost like he's hoping it happens. The Lakers took their lead late into the fourth quarter and looked like they had the win in hand until Dirk Nowitzki hit a tough jumper. Nowitzki working on Odom. Nowitzki, yes! Wow! And Kobe threw a costly turnover with 20 seconds left. Here is Bryant, picked off by Terry, and a foul committed by Fisher. Pau Gasol was called for a foul against Dirk on the inbound, and the Mavs were already in the bonus. Dirk shot 89% from the free throw line that season and hit both to give the Mavs their first lead since the second quarter. After an intentional foul from Jason Kidd, the Lakers inbounded the ball to Gasol, and Kobe fell down without a foul called, and the Lakers turned the ball over. Down to five. Gasol had enough three, stolen by Kidd, and a foul called on the Lakers. Kidd was fouled and only hit one of his two free throws an opening for Kobe Bryant to add to his legacy. Right, here comes Kobe. Kobe for three. Rebound is slapped by Terry, and that's it. The Dallas Mavericks have defeated the Los Angeles Lakers in game one here at Staples 
in L.A. Kobe finished with 36 points. Pau Gasol had 15 points, 11 rebounds, and 7 assists. And Lamar Odom had 15 points off the bench. But it wasn't enough. They had a chance. But it was the Lakers' two devastating turnovers in the last 20 seconds of the game that gave the Mavs a 1-0 series lead. In Game 2, Kobe and Dirk traded some impossible shots to get it started. Nowitzki. And here is Bryant's first shot. But it was the Mavs' four threes that gave them that 26-20 lead at the end of the first. Stevenson for three. Kept alive. Kid open for three, yes. So this is a team that has struggled on the road. Dirk Nowitzki knocking down the three. Kobe and Bynum each contributed eight points in the second quarter, and the Mavs held a slim lead at halftime. Bryant backing his way on Kidd. He's feeling it. Here's Bynum spinning his way for the reverse. The Mavs made a few plays to grab a six-point lead at the start the third quarter. Stevenson, he's hit two from downtown and make it three. But then it got gross. Both teams only combined for 30 points and shot 13 of 42 from the field in the quarter. And the Mavs went into the fourth up 68-62. The Mavs recovered offensively thanks to J.J. Barea, who was almost too small for the Lakers' giant front line to guard. He worked his way into the paint and scored eight points with two assists in the fourth as the Mavericks built up a 15-point lead, which felt insurmountable to the Lakers' struggling offense. Here's Barea again getting into the lane. Barea beats Odom off the dribble. Wow. Barea just taking over the game. The Lakers missed their first 15 threes of the game until Kobe walked into one with 239 left in the game to cut the Mavs' lead to 11. It was Bryant's only field goal in the entire fourth quarter. Whether it was because of his ankle injury or a problem with the Lakers as a team, Kobe just wasn't a big part of their offense and no one else could get anything going. The Lakers only scored 32 points in the entire second half and their frustration started to manifest. A combination of Odom and Artest colliding with Berea and Artest is being ejected for the elbow to the head of Berea. This one has gotten out of hand for Ron Artest. You saw the shove a couple minutes yeah. ago of Marion. Artest at the end of these games is always a, a, a fuse just waiting to... To be Ron Artest instantly walked to the locker room and later was suspended for Game 3. But that wasn't even the end of the Lakers' problems after Game 2. Andrew Bynum spoke to reporters post-game and talked about the team problems. He said, It's deeply rooted at this point. It's obvious we have trust issues. Unless we come out and discuss it, then nothing is going to really change. Here are some of the plays that showed the Lakers' lack of trust in the fourth quarter of Game 2. Lamar Odom tries to take it himself despite the help defense from Jason Kidd. Odom wheeling in on Nowitzki. Shannon Brown forced a three when he was shooting under 35% from three that season, and the Lakers were zero for 14 from three in this game. Derek Fisher pulled up from three with 20 seconds on the shot clock, but the Lakers were getting desperate. Kobe was asked about Bynum's comments about trust, and he agreed with the Lakers' big man. I think the trust that he's referring to is being able to help each other on the defensive end of the floor, Bryant said. You saw a lot of layups. He gets frustrated when he supports a guard coming off a screen and roll and nobody supports him. Here are some of the plays Kobe referenced. Odom and Fisher tried to send two defenders on both sides of a Dirk screen and J.J. Barea got right into the paint, so Bynum was stuck on an island in space to defend both J.J. and Haywood in the dunker spot. Barea with a runner! <laughs> Again, Odom and Blake got stuck on a Dirk screen, and Bynum had to pick up J.J. Barea, but J.J. reads it right and hits Haywood in the dunker spot for an easy dunk. You can clearly see Bynum's frustration. And again, J.J. draws two defenders off the pick and pop from Dirk, and Kobe runs up to help as well, leaving the Mavs with a three-on-two advantage down low. Haywood kicked out to Kidd, who was wide open for another three. Back to Dallas for Game 3, Lamar Odom started for the Lakers since Artest was suspended. During the regular season, Odom, Bynum, and Pau Gasol only played two minutes together, so this was basically a brand new lineup for the Lakers during a pivotal game in the series. Kobe picked up two fouls in six minutes and had to leave the game. The second foul was against Dirk Nowitzki, who hit a couple of threes, 
and scored 11 points in the first quarter to lift the Mavericks. You know, a coach is 100% right. Can't be the strategy because somebody's got to be running to the body of Dirk Nowitzki. He's too good of a shooter. Another breakdown. And another three! And this is another example of the Lakers' trust issues between Bynum and Powell. But Andrew Bynum almost matched him shot for shot to score 10 points of his own before he picked up his second foul. The Lakers outscored the Mavs 34-12 in the paint and took a four-point lead into halftime. Bynum goes for the steal and takes it away. Here he goes. Andrew Bynum. In the third quarter, the Mavs scraped out an 11-4 run to tie the game up, but only scored 19 points in the period, and the Lakers were up six going into the fourth. Bryant pulls back, fires, in and out, tipped by Brown. Beautiful play from Shannon Brown. But the Lakers were going to need someone else to step up. Phil Jackson pleaded with Pau Gasol to be that guy, but he was shrinking from the moment. With four minutes left, Dirk committed an offensive foul, and it looked like the momentum was all in favor of the Lakers. Nowitzki, offensive foul! Gasol steps in and draws the charge. But Dirk made a tough play to keep the Mavs' hopes alive, kicking out to Peja Stojakovic, who scored his 11th point of the fourth quarter. Nowitzki across the lane. Stojakovic, bang! And then Kobe and Powell made a mistake that turned the game completely around. Bryant inside, Gasol turned his back. And then Bryant with the foul. Jason Kidd and Dirk hit their free throws to give the Mavs their first lead since the second quarter. Derek Fisher, Jason Terry, and Lamar Odom all traded baskets and the lead for their team. Odom against Dyakovic, difficult shot, he knocks it down. So many big shots here in the fourth quarter. Dirk hit a tough lefty hook off of a drive to take the lead back and then, one minute left, Lakers down by two, and Lamar Odom held onto the ball for the entire possession to try to attack Peja. But instead, he proved Andrew Bynum correct. The Lakers didn't have trust in each other. Jason Terry saved an offensive rebound for the Mavs. Too strong, rebound deflected. Terry tries to save it, he does, and a new 24. And got fouled with 17 seconds left to extend the Mavs' lead to four. Here comes the double team. And Terry is fouled. Fouled with 17.4 remaining. He'll shoot free throws. A massive 10-point turnaround in the last four minutes of play. And ESPN started to show the statistics of teams coming back from down 3-0 in a playoff series. Kobe had scored 36 points in Game 1, 23 points in Game 2, and only finished with 17 points in Game 3. Pau Gasol only scored 12 points. The Lakers were crumbling, but the Mavericks were rising. 32 points for Dirk Nowitzki, 23 from Jason Terry, and 15 from Peja Stojakovic off the bench. Dallas was getting everything they needed to take that dominating 3-0 lead. Down zero games to three, the Lakers walked into game four without much hope. No NBA team had ever come back to win, and only three teams have ever come back to force a game seven. In the first quarter, Kobe Bryant scored 13 points on six of eight shooting to try to boost his Lakers to be one of those teams. Good offensive rebound by Gasol, and Bryant, who spent the last two trips begging for the ball. But the Mavericks held a slight lead going into the second quarter. And that's when it all broke loose. Terry from out of the corner hits another three. Steal by Stojakovic. Look at Peja go all the way. How about Terry again? How about four for four? For oh, Jason God. Terry from three. Got the switch. Davinsky to Terry. He oh, is five my. of five oh. from behind the long line. Stojakovic, oh. another one. The Mavericks bench had been a strength all season in all series, and they exploded. Jason Terry hit five threes, Peja added two more, and J.J. Barea scored six points with two assists in the period. The Mavs went on a 27 run, and the way the Lakers had been scoring in this series, the game was essentially over. Come on, you gotta, you gotta chip away. Oh, oh boy, what, what can I tell you? The fourth quarter was basically entirely garbage time, and it was just getting worse and worse for the Lakers and culminated in Andrew Bynum clotheslining J.J. Barea in one of the dirtiest fouls in NBA history. That is terrible! And Barea is injured. And the Mavericks bench is being very cautious as the medical staff looks. The medical, the, uh, medical staff's out looking at him. They're keeping everybody on the Mavs bench away from Bynum so they don't get anybody coming off the bench in an incident for the next series. 
Artest walked by them to the exit, and he's been thrown out of the game. Fortunately, Berea is getting up. Let's hope he's okay. That's one of the most Bush League things I've ever seen in a game. That's yeah. disgusting. In the end, Kobe Bryant only played 15 minutes in the second half and missed all five of his shots. Finishing the game with just 17 points again, the Lakers got swept, Phil Jackson's time in coaching ended, and Kobe Bryant would only make the playoffs one more time in his career. The Dallas Mavericks, though, they were riding high. Dirk Nowitzki outplayed Kobe Bryant head-to-head -head and swept the two-time defending champions. Jason Terry had risen to average nearly 20 points per game in the series and lead the Mavs bench to score 49.5 points per game in the series, a 35.6 point advantage over the Lakers bench. Jason Kidd, Sean Marion, Tyson Chandler, Deshaun Stevenson, Peja Stojakovic, and the Mavs were all moving on to the Western Conference Finals and would eventually beat LeBron, Wade, and Bosch to win the 2011 NBA title and become legends in Dallas. This series was short-lived, over in just four games, but the stakes were massive. For the Lakers, they crumbled and ended an era. For the Mavs, they rose up and found a way to win at the highest level for the first time in their history.